Well, which do you lean towards, government doing more or government doing less? Nigel Farage, uh, you heard him there, say he's in favour of less. But I ask you the question now, A, because we're about to discuss it at some length, but B, because this size of the state issue is perhaps the most important question facing the country in the forthcoming election. Now, on the specific question, which do you lean towards, government doing more or government doing less, YouGov asked the public in a poll last month. The public came down 62% for more government and 38% for less. But the Conservatives are aiming to get the share of national income spent by the government's departments down, famously, to levels that haven't been seen since the 1930s. That has been the subject of some argument. So first, let's get some facts from Duncan Weldon. One of Labour's most evocative lines of attack on the Conservatives is that their fiscal plans would cut spending on public services all the way back to 1930s levels. It sounds like a good line. And as the election approaches, Labour are unlikely to let bygone eras be bygone eras. But is it true? Does the experience of a decade so long ago really tell us anything about British politics today? Are we really heading back to the 1930s? The historical memory of the 30s is depression and unemployment. But by the end of the decade, the economy was growing well. Nowadays, evidence of the 1930s is a little harder to come by. Let's be clear about where this claim comes from. According to the Office of Budget Responsibility, the government's fiscal plans imply a deep squeeze on public spending. As a share of the economy, it'll only be heading back to where it was roughly a decade ago. But spending on government departments, that's everything from schools to policing to transport, could be heading back to 1930s levels. That's because we'll be spending more on things like welfare, debt interest payments and capital investment. Looking at just government spending on departments, everything from health to defence, then the OBR numbers say it is heading to its lowest level as a share of national income since 1938. While factually correct, it's perhaps not the most informative way of looking at things. The squeeze that's currently planned is quite tight. For example, on the government's current plans, if they were to follow through with them and continue to protect areas like the NHS, schools and overseas aid, would imply that other areas of public service spending could be cut by as much as 40% compared to their 2010 level by the end of the next parliament. That would be a very tight squeeze. But it's important to remember that the economy is much bigger than it was in the 30s. This graph shows spending on government departments in real terms. If we give current spending the value of 100 and trace it back over the last few decades, we can see that it's grown considerably since the end of the Second World War. But in the next Parliament, it's forecast to fall sharply. Still, it can be hard to understand how, even as a share of national income, spending on government departments could hit 1930s levels. Because as Labour are keen to point out, back when these tube carriages came into operation, there wasn't even an NHS. The big reason is defence. Defence spending in the late 30s was more than twice as high as a share of GDP as it will be by 2019. Maintaining a global empire and the world's second biggest navy wasn't exactly cheap. Strip out defence spending and the 1930s comparison no longer holds. The thing about the 1930s is that they were followed by the 1940s and the Second World War. By the late 30s, public spending was being boosted by rearmament, not a development that really pleased the then Chancellor. The budget deals with larger totals of expenditure than this country has ever had to face in times of peace. This is chiefly due to our defence programme, which has been forced upon us by other countries who have failed to follow our lead in disarmament. Putting it all together, we can say that the government's plans do imply very tight spending on public services. But the 1930s comparison 
is somewhat misleading. We aren't, or at least we hope we aren't, about to fight a global war. And that means less need for defence spending. Still, there is a reason why the OBR brought this up in the first place. The government's current plans suggest that total spending as a share of national income will fall back to about 35% of national income by 2019. That's slightly lower than we've seen in any other year since the end of the Second World War. But perhaps more importantly, the composition of that spending is going to be quite different by 2019 than we saw, for example, in the late 1990s when we had a similar level of overall spending. Exclude defence, and spending on government departments in the late 2010s will be higher than in the late 1930s. But just because the state isn't retreating to its pre-NHS days doesn't mean there aren't deep cuts to come. You don't need to invoke the 1930s to say there'll be much more pain in the next parliament. Yeah.